Hello, hello. Just letting people join. Hi, hi, hello. Just waiting for a few people to get on for this fun vertical live. Hello, how are you? We're gonna get into some fun updates from yesterday's happy hour hang. Hello, Karina, hi, Kia. Thank you, you guys. I did my outfit of the day, and um, this is a really fun, cute set from Amazon. It's literally just like a comfy biker shorts crop top set. Um, I'm obsessed. I tagged my Amazon storefront and this outfit um, in my outfit of the day vertical video. So if you want to go take a look at that and other things that are on my Amazon storefront, definitely go take a look. Hello, Monica. I'm so happy this is what you needed to distract yourself. Sacred Space, Kim, Kiara, hello, Monica, Dora, you guys, hi. I know a lot of you have been giving positive, hi, Jenny, positive feedback to these kind of impromptu vertical lives. And I am trying to implement them more because I feel like they're a little more casual, they're a little more fun, and they work perfectly for whenever we need just like a quick catch up. And so today when I was looking at what tea was going on, I was like, you know what? I feel like today's a vertical live day as opposed to a pop off because there's a lot of little updates um, from what we discussed yesterday that I wanna fill you in on that I don't wanna wait for tomorrow. So that's why I decided to just do a little vertical live today. We have Kate, hey, happy to see you. Haven't been able to make a live in a while, been busy with class, hope all is well. Kate, totally okay. Hopefully you're part of the after watcher game. I'm so happy that you are in class. I live for it. Yes, you guys, I did go ahead and tag the Rare Beauty blush. You guys know I am obsessed with the new Rare Beauty blush. I feel like it gives you the perfect amount of pink and a little highlight. So I went ahead and tagged that product in this video because you know it's my new Rare Beauty obsession. And it is truly one of the best products that I think Rare Beauty has come out with because it's essentially a blush and a highlighter in one. And we love a two for one situation. Nothing sells me harder on a product than when you tell me I'm getting two items for the price of one. You know what I mean? I love, love, love a good deal. Hello. Thank you guys for the compliment. Oh my God, I need to wear pink more often. I feel like I am really bad about always wearing like all black or neutral colors. So I need to add pinks back into the rotation. Mary, hi from the UK. Hello. Are the bottoms good for running, Kia? I'll be honest with you. I have not worn this outfit for running, um, but for walking and like light cardio, I would say yes. Um, I personally have thick thighs. They save lives, but I have thicker thighs. So I personally, whenever I'm going running, I prefer to run in either a legging or a long biker short. These are a little bit shorter. So that's why I probably wouldn't run in these to be completely honest with you. But for walking or yoga or just like looking cute, wanting a cute athleisure outfit. That's what I think they're perfect for. I don't want to tell you that they're good for running because TBH, I haven't ran in them. And like I said, with uh, my gorgeous thick thighs, I prefer um, something a little bit longer to, you know, make sure nothing's riding up because we don't want to get chafed. You know what I mean? That chafing's just not cute. Um, Cammie said, do you like skims? I do like certain skims products. Um, I love all of her comfy stuff, her PJs. I haven't tried any of the bras, but my friends are obsessed with the Skims bras. Um, but I personally have only tried like her comfy clothes and honestly so far a fan. The like longer biker sleep short that's like ribbed. Um, honestly, obsessed. I have them in three colors, a pink, a gray, and a black. So highly recommend the sleep shorts that she has because I live, my like favorite ideal pajama situation is shorts and a long sleeve top. So I feel like as long as you get a good pair of sleep shorts, you can kind of, you know, do whatever top you're feeling. But my personal preference for sleeping is like 
shorts and a long sleeve. Um, Kaylee, hi Madison, made it to my first live, just getting ready to go to work normally and after watcher. Yay, Kaylee, I'm so happy it worked out. I feel like the good thing about these vertical lives too is that I can do them at different times. So it hopefully opens up the opportunity for people who are typically after watchers to be able to make a live because they're not at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. They're kind of like whenever I, it feels weird to say that because it feels weird to have a job that you can be like, oh, well, whenever I decide to go live, I get to go live because y'all know for years, somebody else told me when I was going to go live and somebody else told me when I was going to create content and what content I was going to create. So still sometimes I catch myself feeling like so weird whenever I'm like, I get to decide when I go live because I'm still like programmed that someone else is telling me to do it. So that's what's fun about these vertical lives is that I kind of get to pick whenever we go live and I try to make them earlier, um, especially for our international people to give you guys an opportunity for those of you who are normally, you know, not able to make the 3.30 Pacific Standard Time happy hour hangs and do it a little bit earlier. Yeah, see, it's 5 a.m. here, but I need the tea. Okay, just a, I, just a rhythm. I think I'm saying that right. Bless you. Bless you. See, I'm never going to get these time zones right, you guys. Like, every time I try to, like, figure out the time zone situations, I feel like I never get them right for everyone. Thank you for tuning in at 5 a.m. for the tea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I promise it will be worth it. We have Rose. Hello from Texas. Lola, normally an after watcher, but today I've been doing home chores. Lola, love a good home chore day, honestly. You know what I mean? And it's 11 here. Okay, good. Good, good, good. We have someone watching from Panama. Chris Rob, hello, hello. Jenny as well. I'm doing good. Um, thank you guys for telling me that I'm looking tan, Sasha. I appreciate it. You guys, finally in LA, it is sunny, which I know sounds crazy because people are like, isn't the whole point of paying an astronomical amount of rent to live in LA, you're paying for the weather? Normally, yes, but I don't know. Global warming, obviously. As of late, we have gotten so much rain. It's been cold, but finally, and I don't want to jinx it, but this week looks like we're getting back to normal LA weather. And my favorite thing once it starts getting warm outside is to be able to go work out outside. Like I love going for walks. I love doing like a walk jog situation because I can work out and get a little sun on the, at the same time. Obviously SPF first. Um, but so I've been able to do that. I went, did that today, and I did it a couple times last week. So hopefully, 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 the tan, and it, it might be the rare beauty blush, to be honest with you guys. That might be the real tea of why I'm looking, like, alive in this video. Um, Marisa, do I have any trips planned? I do have a trip plan. Only one, you guys. It's, I always, whenever I say I don't have a lot of trips planned, that's when life goes absolutely crazy. But as of right now, um, I only have one trip planned in May um, in a couple weeks. I'm going back to Kansas City for a baby shower, one of the spicy girls. Um, if you are new and just tuning in, my childhood group of friends and I, we call ourselves the spicy girls because we all got a chili pepper tattoo on a whim during one of their first visits to LA. Anyway, um, one of the spicy girls, her older brother and his wife are expecting their first child. This might be too much information. If you guys don't care about this much information in my life, let me know. Uh, but they're expecting their first child, so we're gonna go back and celebrate them for the baby shower. So I'm super pumped about that. Um, the blush is blushing, Epic Turtle. Thank you, thank you. Cavalli said, what's going on with Travis? Okay, so for today's Vertical Live, the updates I wanna fill y'all in on and give you the tea on. Yes, the blush color I have on is Happy. It is the Rare Beauty Luminous Powder Blush, I believe is the whole term. I tagged it in the video um, in the color Happy. I also have the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush in the same color. And I think it works best if you layer them. So if you do the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush and then this one on top, but if you don't wanna buy two products, all you really need, TBH, like I said, it's a two-in-one situation, is the Rare Beauty Blush Powder because it's like a blush and a highlighter in one. We also have Hawaii watching. Callie said Soleil. Um, yes, the color is happy because y'all know I like live for a pink and it's pink. 
Um, I also think pink just looks best with my hair and my skin tone. Um, but the other color of that blush that I think is really pretty for those of you who like a more neutral blush and not as pink, Truth. Truth is also a really good color of that Rare Beauty blush. True colors, absolutely. Shout out to Isaiah. Isaiah, you have the most iconic, iconic parent ever. I hope you are having a fantastic day, Isaiah. Love from me to you. Um, okay, let's go ahead, you guys, and I'm gonna fill you in on what we're gonna discuss. We're gonna talk about Gypsy Rose. We're gonna talk about Tom Cruise and his ex, which is funny because yesterday was really the first time we've ever really talked about Tom Cruise, and then now I'm getting all of this tea. Hopefully that's not Scientology finding me, but um, now I have an update on the Tom Cruise situation. Then we're gonna go ahead and talk about the Biebers, a little update on them, and then we're gonna get into this Travis Kelsey tea. Positive and negative Travis Kelsey tea today, you guys. I'm not living for the negative, but I would not be doing my job if I didn't tell y'all why this man is in a little hot water. Um, and I don't want any trolls coming for me being like, Madison only talks about the positive things of Travis Kelsey. That is not the case. I will let y'all know why people are upset with him. Um, and then we're also going to talk about Taylor Swift because someone who I normally praise is dragging Taylor in a new interview. And I don't know how, I, well, I know how I feel about it. It's not, I'm not feeling good. Um, Travis isn't dragging Taylor, but another artist is dragging Taylor in a new interview. And like I said, this artist is someone who I normally praise. Um, and so it's kind of disappointing, but you know, don't meet your heroes. Actually, she's not a hero, but I'm just saying it's disappointing to hear that someone who I've previously uplifted is dragging Taylor Swift. Um, but we'll go ahead and get into it. I saw Timna say, have I missed anything? No, Timna, we've just been, you know, catching up, BSing a little bit, which I know some people love, some people hate, but I love getting to catch up with you guys and get personal because I feel like that's the whole point of a live. That's what makes it fun. Um, also, if you are just now tuning in, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Also, if you are new and this is the first time you are seeing my face, hi, my name is Madison. Welcome to the House of Hill. I like to say we are one of the most positive, fun communities on the internet. I talk about celeb tea, I do lifestyle, travel vlogs, beauty, and honestly, the best part about being a part of the House of Hill is that we get to discuss the tea, uh, discuss our lives, and we have these really fun discussions, and even if we disagree on something, we're respectful, we keep it cute, we never take anything too seriously, and honestly, we have the best freaking time. So please join us, become a part of our fam. We are trying to grow so we get to do more fun things together. So if I am popping up on your YouTube feed for the first time, come join us, come hang. Again, I'm biased, but I feel like we have a lot of fun. And as you can see in the comments already in the chat, like everybody here knows one another. This is a random live and look, the friends are friending. Um, so come come join us. We also love a distraction. Uh, that's what I feel like these lives and videos are. If you have a lot of crazy stuff happening in your life, like we all do, and you want something to distract yourself from the craziness, we got you. That's our specialty here in the House of Hill, dare I say. Um, okay, you guys, let's go ahead and get into these updates, though, because I definitely want to fill you in on everything. Like I said, we're going to be talking about Gypsy Rose, giving an update on Tom Cruise. Hi, Jane. Hi, Michaela. Um, Michaela, that makes me feel so good. Michaela said the amount of times I end up laughing during these lives, it's the best. Michaela, as someone who was told they were not funny growing up, that's my childhood trauma. I'm framing that, so thank you. Uh, Cass, shouting out because Jax is napping. Perfect time for a live. Oh my God, Cass. 2 p.m. is the sweet spot. Good to know for future vertical lives. Okay, live for it. I hope Jax continues to sleep throughout this entire vertical live. Everyone cross your fingers for Cass so she can get these updates from the tea. Um, so we're gonna talk about Gypsy Rose, Tom Cruise, the Biebers, Travis Taylor. Kicking off about Gypsy Rose, you guys. So a little update. You know, yesterday I filled you guys in on how her divorce from Ryan Anderson is now becoming a little contentious. She filed a restraining order against him. She also has filed saying, I want him to pay me spousal support. So it went from her not wanting to cause any drama to 
Now the drama is being caused. Thank you so much, Susie. Hi. Okay, that is the cutest effing thing I've ever seen with the glasses. Susie, so happy you're here. So happy you made the vertical live. So happy you're ready for these tea filled updates. Um, okay, you guys. So according to sources who spoke to TMZ, we now have a little more insight into what caused Gypsy and Ryan's blow up fights. Okay. And according to these sources who spoke to TMZ, one of Gypsy's issues with Ryan was his food hoarding. If this sounds like an episode of TLC, you're not far off. These sources claim that Gypsy wasn't, it's not funny, but it's a little funny. These sources claim that Gypsy wasn't fully aware of Ryan's food hoarding tendencies before moving in with him after she was released from prison. This apparently caused tension between him and Gypsy because they lived in a two bedroom apartment. Gypsy reportedly told people that Ryan's hoarding behavior, food hoarding behavior reminded him of her mom. She was allegedly especially bothered by his fridge. And Kaylee said, it's a little funny, okay? You guys are making me feel better because I was reading this and I was like, this is not real life, but it is real life. Um, apparently, Gypsy's biggest issue with Ryan's food hoarding was his fridge. He allegedly had a lot of expired items in the fridge. And one day when he left, she tried to clean out the fridge. And when he realized that she cleaned out the fridge. He was reportedly not happy. Um, these TMZ sources said that it sparked a huge argument, which left Gypsy feeling, quote, shaken. She found it, quote, scary that he got so worked up over the fridge. Just get another fridge, Chris said. <laughs> Chris said, you're living in suburbia. Get multiple fridge. Get multiple fridges like the rest of us. That made me LOL. And then Cass said, this is what happens when you marry a person when you're in prison and don't actually know a person. Cass, the way I was thinking, this is why Mama Hill has always encouraged my sister and I to live with our partners before. She's like, you need to make sure you can live with a man before you get married. Because once you say I do and the marriage license is signed and then you move in and then you find out that you can't stand this person, now you're in a really big mess. Whereas if you just live together before you get married... You can figure out if you can stand them or not, which I know is kind of controversial because some parents and especially some parents of daughters, I guess, feel like their children shouldn't live with a significant other until they're engaged or married, but not Mama Hill. Mama Hill's like, absolutely not. I'd rather you live with the person before than get a divorce later. And TBH, that's why we stand Mama Hill in this house. Um, also, other things that Gypsy struggled with were reportedly, you guys get ready for this, was his snoring. She couldn't stand his snoring. Okay. And he also, also, um, Gypsy told loved ones that Ryan was like a quote, human furnace. He ran hot at night and she prefers sleeping in a cold bed. So again, things that we could have discovered about Ryan if we had just maybe not said I do behind bars, waited, and lived together post-prison. Okay, I'm, I love all of you standing Mama Hill. Exactly, right? Truly, truly, truly. Um, Dora said Gypsy is oversharing at this point. <laughs> so she was mad at him for being a human. Hadley, this is how I feel. Joy said this can't be real. And honestly... That's how I feel too. Niati said, cold bed always while my partner doesn't like the fan or AC. Here's the thing. While Gypsy is saying she prefers a cold bed, literally same. I have to sleep with my thermostat on 69. It needs to be cold. I want to be freezing so I can be under the blankets. I understand that. However, poor Ryan Anderson, do you think this man can help that he becomes a human furnace at night? <laughs> like, I feel like that's something he can't help. So I feel like, they just needed to maybe come to a common ground, like get a king size bed. You sleep all the way over there. I will be sleeping all the way over here. So we do not touch. I cannot feel your steam heat in the middle of the night. Like, I feel like that could have been a situation where they were in a two bedroom. So if the snoring was really bad, you know, maybe separate once the snoring begins. I just don't know how we went from her 
saying this man's D is fire to now she literally can't stand his snoring or the fact that he's a human furnace at night. Like it's, a lot. Eileen said, unpopular opinion. I married without moving in with my husband. We dated for three years though. Is it true you don't know the person until you live with them? Absolutely true. That's how I feel. I feel like you cannot really know someone until you are living with them. Also not unpopular. I feel like it, again, this is why I love the House of Hill because we have people who experience different things, have different opinions. We get to discuss these things. I don't think it's necessarily unpopular to not live with your significant other before you get married. I think it's a personal preference and what you're raised to think. But I do think you really don't know somebody until you live with them. You know what I mean? I, I feel like everyone can put on a front, even if like you date for five years. It doesn't matter. Anyone can put on a front when you're just having sleepovers. You know what I mean? Sleepovers, fun. That person eventually goes home. It's not the same. When you are day in, day out, 24-7, 365 with this individual, that's when you learn. Do you leave the cabinets open? Do you not pick up your wet towels? Do you snore? Do you for <laughs> forward? Do you hoard expired food? Like... You know, I do feel like the food hoarding would have came up like maybe while they were dating, but maybe not. You know what I mean? Uh, Kelda said, my dog occasionally snores a bit or dreams with sound effects. Adorable. A guy snores. Annoying. Kelda, the way I could not agree with the statement more. When a dog snores, why is it the cutest thing ever? But a human snores and you want to smother them with a pillow. One million percent could not agree more. Timna said, this sounds like me when I started losing feelings for my ex and even his breathing started to annoy me. I kind of understand. Gabrielle said, as incredible as it may seem, there are couples who live together but only have sexual relationships after marriage. T, for sure. Um, also, Tam was here as well. Um, Jane said, my ex-husband snored too. I moved into my daughter's room. I do understand, Timna, what you mean, too, about, like, once someone irritates you to that point, they're breathing, and you're just like, why did you breathe like that? Why did you inhale oxygen like that? Like, and the eye twitch, for sure. Obviously, also, also I want to make it clear, although I'm making a lot of, like, jokes at Gypsy Rose's expense, I don't think anyone should stay in an unhappy marriage. We have one life to live. Our days on this earth are numbered. So if you are not happy, you should not stay in a marriage. However, this situation is unique because Gypsy Rose married this man while she was in prison and only was with him out of prison for three months. And she went from bragging about this man's D to now saying all of these things about him. So that is why I feel like this situation is unique. I never want to say someone should stay in an unhappy situation. Like if Ryan really got that pressed over her cleaning out his nasty expired food, girl should run for the hills. Absolutely. Um, it's also just all of the thing, all of the optics. You guys know I talk about optics all the time. It's just like optically a tough situation for Gypsy Rose. Again, she married him in prison, only lived with him for a few months after. She's now filed for divorce. She filed the restraining order. She wants him to pay spousal support. She's spilling the tea about some embarrassing things about him. Um, and yeah, just like tough day to be Ryan Anderson. You know what I mean? Like poor guy went from just being alone special education teacher to now his business is being spread on TMZ and he's not getting a check for it. You know what I mean? So that I feel like is kind of sad. Uh, Gabrielle said, I just find it sad when some women have difficulty leaving a marriage because they are supported by their husband. Oh, 1 million, 1 million percent. Absolutely. Um, Michaela said, especially if he yelled at her boy, bye. That's what I'm saying. Like you raise your voice at me. <laughs> Again, I was raised by Mama Hill, so let's just say that. You know what I mean? Like, you you raise your voice over the fact I threw out the moldy cheese. It's a wrap. It's a wrap, you know? Um, and it sounds like Gypsy knew it was a wrap, so that's why she left. Um, I just think, you know, it is it is becoming messy. It is becoming messy. I just think it's interesting that we went from, we want this divorce to be amicable, to all this mess in TMZ, like 
Should have known, you know what I mean? Should have known. Uh, Cass said, I'm lucky if I have time to clean my fridge. Cass, that's why TBH, I don't keep a lot in the fridge. But you're a mom, and you have about a bajillion things going on. So I think if you do not have time to clean your fridge, you're fine, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, and Epic Turtle said, never let him disrespect you. Yelling is abuse. Oh, absolutely. No, like I said, you raise your voice to me, it's a wrap. Um, okay, moving on. I want to update you guys also about the Tom Cruise situation. Um, Angela said Tuesday live. I thought it was Wednesday. LOL. No, Angela, it is Tuesday. I know. I wish it was hump day as well. Um, but you guys know I'm trying to implement these vertical lives. I'm trying to like switch things up. You know what I mean? We do the happy hour hangs. We do pop-offs, vertical lives, shorts. I've been back to outfit of the days. Um, I'm just trying to switch things up and basically give y'all more of my face, which is hopefully a good thing. Um, because I want us to grow. I want the house of Hill to grow because I want us to do more things. Um, more things cost monies. And so I just want us to grow and keep getting bigger and that way we can do more fun things together. So that way we can do like meetups and travel and all of the things. Sacred Space said, we love you coming on here more. Okay, good. Thank God, because I always get nervous. I'm like, is anyone gonna show up for the vertical live? I don't know. But everyone's here. We have almost 200 people. So, okay, moving on to this Tom Cruise update. So, no, Sacred Space, we're doing meetups and travel. Like, I don't care what anyone says. We're doing meetups, and it's gonna be so freaking fun. And also, you guys know, once I'm manifesting here, once I get the talk show, for the first month, the only people allowed to be in the audience are House of Hill people. If you've been with me from day one, when the dream happens, you're coming along with me. So y'all know I have been saying this because I'm manifesting it. When we get the talk show deal for the first month, the only people allowed in the audience, no buying of tickets for free, will be people from the House of Hill because y'all have supported me from day one. So we are saying that now. Tim just said, been here. Exactly. Like first month. So sorry to the rest of the public, but it will be reserved for House of Hill only people because, again, we're all in this together, y'all. 2024, it's going to be our year. Um, as long as it's you, Niati said, vertical or horizontal doesn't matter. We will watch. T, I love it. Maria, thank you. Hey, you. Hey, Maria. Hey, you. Hello. Oh, Jax is coming. <laughs> Jax is coming to the live talk show. Are you kidding me? He knows when the best tea is coming. Uh, thank you so, so much, Maria. I love it. I love the little dancing hen. Um, okay, on to Tom Cruise, you guys. Um, remember yesterday during the happy hour hang, we discussed how um, Tom Cruise allegedly, together we stand, Chris, that's the tea, um, that Tom Cruise allegedly has these like weird conditions for the women that he dates. And we talked about how one of those conditions is, again, this was a, a source speaking to Touch Weekly. One of those conditions allegedly is that he does not want any of the family and friends of the person that he's dating to speak to the press. And he was dating this woman. Her name was Alcina Kairova. She is a Russian socialite. He was dating her. She's 36. He's 61. And he ended up breaking up with her after her ex-husband did an interview and warned Tom Cruise saying he needed to keep his eyes and his wallet open. Tom Cruise didn't like that he was chirping to the press about him. He broke up with Elsina. And now, apparently, you guys, here's the fresh tea, the little update I have for you. Uh, according to a new report from Radar Online, Elsina is not happy with the way that Tom Cruise ended things. This source said that Alcina followed, quote, every one of Tom's demands. She was discreet about their relationship and didn't push things. The source said because of her ex, Tom, quote, gets paranoid and left her, which she thought was, quote, unfair and cruel. And apparently, again, this is coming from Radar Online, Alcina is thinking of going to the press to share some of her experience of dating Tom Cruise as like a way to get revenge on the man. And this source said that if she did that, it would be a quote, nightmare for Tom. Honestly, Jules Julie, I agree that she dodged a bullet 1 million percent, but also I'm like, go to the press. I wanna know, I wanna know. 
did Tom Cruise make you try to convert to Scientology? Because that's one of the things we heard yesterday is that whoever he dates has to accept his faith. Marriage has to be on the table. So I'm like, Michaela said she needs to be careful. He's scary. Honestly, Michaela T, you guys know. Um, Miss Heather, did they have an NDA? So previously I've heard that the church has made, again, this is coming from Leah Remini's book. I read her book when she left Scientology that came out, what, like 2016? I do remember her having a thing in there that one of the, Tom's ex-girlfriends did have to sign something that like she would never speak out about their relationship, but that's because their relationship was never public. So because he was public with this woman and it was in the tabloids that they were dating, uh, and even like Page Six published a report when they broke up. Hi from Australia. Hi, Leah. Um, I am assuming there's not an NDA, but I wouldn't be surprised if now hearing threats of her wanting to go to the press, magically an NDA appears in this girl's email. You know what I mean? Um, Jane J said, headed to the press. Lola said, I have to go to sleep and save this video for my on, hello, for my way on the train tomorrow. I don't even know if this is how it works. Congratulations that your channel is growing. I'm also an OG. Lola, yes, this it should save to the live tab on my channel so you'll be able to watch this after also for anyone who's after watching like you'll be able to watch this um just like any other live that I've done it's just going to be vertical so if you're watching it on your computer it's going to be vertical and on your phone it's going to look like a TikTok live um Susie said careful Scientology and fair game is real she should leave quietly and thank god she dodged the bullet Susie, it sounds like you have watched the same documentaries as I have. Could not agree more. That is the only thing that's like spooky about the situation and even why I was nervous about talking about this yesterday because I did go in a little bit on Scientology. Um, I, I think this girl should be happy that she was able to leave the relationship. Well, even if he left first, who cares? Like dodged a bullet. Honestly, I don't see Tom Cruise like spending millions of dollars on a partner anyway. And if that's something she requires and needs, like, girl, I think it's best that you both just keep it separate. You know what I mean? Leave quietly. Go look at the picture of Nicole Kidman when she divorced Tom Cruise and she's never looked happier. And take it as a sign from God and the universe that it was not meant to be. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> hi, Christian. <laughs> No, we're going to get into Courtney Love later, and I am nothing like Courtney Love, but I do. Love you. Um, Emma said, I can't believe that Suri is about to be 18. Emma, literally same. I had a breakdown about that yesterday. I have never felt more old than seeing the headline that Suri Cruz is about to be 18. I literally remember when Suri Cruz was born. When did we get this old? Ugh, unfair. Um... Let's see, sugary. The annoying part of the vertical is that you can't use the functionality of YouTube Premium that the video can get small. Okay, well, that's good to know. I need to know how it's like on your guys' end as well because I'm new to these vertical lives, so if they're not the vibe, that's okay too. Let me know. I love hearing the feedback on how it works. Um, Nicole Kidman was a whole vibe. Nicole Kidman was a whole vibe truthfully. And you know what's crazy? They adopted children together and those children do not speak to her because she divorced Tom Cruise. That's always insane to me. Like that is how intense the policies are of Scientology. If you disconnect, you cannot communicate with anyone who is still in the church. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, so honestly, I feel like Tom Cruise's ex girl, dodge the bullet. Don't talk to the press. Unless you want some potentially, allegedly scary things to happen to you, I think it's best that we just separate from Tom Cruise and count it as a blessing. Um, okay, let's go ahead and move on. We've not talked about Taylor yet, Gabrielli. We're going to talk about the Biebers really quick, and then we're going to get into Travis and Taylor. So the Biebers, you guys, remember yesterday I told you how they went to Coachella together, definitely as a way to defend against all of those divorce rumors and allegations. Yes, Tamara, I will save the live. It will live on my channel so that way anyone can watch it whenever. Um, also for after watchers, for people who weren't able to make it. So I will definitely save this. It will pop up in the live uh, part of my channel. And I have a different thumbnail for these lives. I'm just calling them Chats with Madison. So that way, if you guys ever see the Chats with Madison, know that's a vertical live. And then Happy Hour Hang is our normal 
horizontal live. Um, anyway, you guys, the Beavers. we talked about Justin and Haley being at Coachella. Um, they had that really sweet PDA filled moment while watching Lana Del Rey and Justin, you guys, if you can believe in an effort to defend his wife and his marriage, Justin reposted this viral video on his Instagram. We have not seen this come from Justin in a while. You know what I mean? And we've been saying, you know, we, some people have been saying they want to see Justin defend his marriage with Haley as hard as Haley defends her marriage. And that Justin just doesn't go as hard as Haley does. But you guys, he did repost the video from a fan account on his Instagram. Angela said, personally, I love that Justin did that. Angela, same. I feel like he needed to. You know what I mean? Poor Haley's been fighting for her life. And I'm happy to see that Justin reposted that fan video on his Instagram. Now, he did not caption it at all. He just posted the video. <laughs> Maria. <laughs> but was it Justin? That made, that made me giggle. That was messy and it made me giggle. So thank you. Um, no caption. But he did post it. And Kim Kardashian commented on it and said, I love you guys. So... Kim loves the Beavers, and Justin loves his wife. And I saw someone also reference um, him being a guest performer with Thames. Um, I also think it was, I personally, truthfully, like no joking, thought it was really good to see Justin get on stage. I feel like he has been away from the public eye for so long. I feel like it was good to see him perform, but I've been seeing some negative reviews about his guest performance, y'all. Like some people are saying that it looked super last minute. What was he wearing? You know, what was he wearing? It just looked thrown together. It looked random. I love the song that he performed with Thames. I think it was a good thing to see him get out there and perform again. But um, not everyone is... Loving it. Uh, Jane said, Justin needs to be on stage. I agree. It's good for him. I agree too. Like at the end of the day, his passion is music. You know what I mean? And I think he is happiest when he is performing, in my opinion. Jerry, hi. Hello from Ireland. Um, Epic Turtle said, would love to see him headline next year. Honestly, same. I feel like maybe a Coachella or like any sort of music festival. I really want to go to Bottle Rock too in Napa. I feel like a music festival would music festival would be better for Justin because it's just a weekend. You know, I think a tour, him ever going on tour again is the likelihood of that happening is slim to none. Um, with his health, I just don't see him doing that again. The last two big tours he did have, um, he canceled, like he ended them early. So truthfully, Epic Turtle, or who said that they want to see him headline? Was that Epic Turtle? Yeah. Epic Turtle, I agree with you. I think him headlining a festival would be like the best thing for him because it's just a weekend. It's not a long commitment and he could still perform and give his fans something. Um, also, hello from India. Hi. I just want to also remind you if you are new and this is the first time you're seeing my face. Hi, my name is Madison. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to the House of Hill. We are always looking for new family members and friends. So if you're here, you're liking what you're seeing. I do celebrity news, lifestyle, beauty, fun, all that stuff, vlogging, love to vlog. Um, if you are interested in any of that, go ahead and subscribe and come hang with us. I also go live every Monday and Wednesday at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time for my happy hour hang. Um, also, if you're here and you haven't given this video a thumbs up yet, will you please go ahead and do so? I see we have I can't believe this on a vertical live. Um, over 240 people here watching. Um, if you are here and you haven't given this video a thumbs up, please do so. Robert, the live I've been going. You guys, can you believe that I've been talking for 40 minutes already? When did that happen? It feels like I've been talking for 10 minutes. Um, we have been going live for about 40 minutes, Robert. So go rewind if you want to catch up. We talked about... Um, Tom Cruise and an update on that situation and his ex-girlfriend and then also an update on Gypsy Rose and her <laughs> divorce with Ryan Anderson. Sarah, after watcher here, finally catching a live. Yeah, Sarah. 
That is why I love the vertical lives. I feel like we can do them at any time and it opens it up for our after watchers to be able to join. So I'm living for it. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jade, okay, I'm glad it's flying for you guys too because I'm just like, how is this going so fast? Um, anyway, you guys, let's go ahead and get into 10 minutes in the world of House of... <laughs> Noelia said 10 minutes in the world of Hill Family's time. T, literally. We have a House of Hill standard time and 40 minutes live feels like 10. Um, kicking back with Kel. Caught alive. I just caught up on the latest tea. So exciting. Yay. Okay, good. I'm so glad that this time worked for a lot of you. Okay, you guys, getting into the tea about Travis Kelsey. So first, some positive news about Travis Kelsey. Uh, he has officially been named the new host for the Amazon Prime show, Are You Smarter Than a Celebrity? This is gonna be his first kind of like big hosting gig. Obviously, he was a guest on Saturday Night Live, but this is like a consistent hosting gig. Um, and he is going to be doing the game show, Are You Smarter Than a Celebrity? It's obviously a take on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? I feel like it's perfect for him, honestly. Um, we know his team has done interviews before saying that obviously Travis can't play football forever. And they have always seen him as having a career in entertainment after his football career. So I feel like honestly hosting a game show, Are You Smarter Than a Celebrity, is going to be perfect for Travis. He'll be able to show his personality. Hopefully they'll quiz him on spelling the word squirrel. Like I just feel like this is the perfect, perfect thing for him to do. Obviously also for my Kansas City people out there, not gonna affect the Chiefs, not gonna affect, you know, his football career, not going to affect us going for another Super Bowl ring. That's all going to be intact. That's all going to be fine. Um, so it, I just feel like it's a great opportunity for Travis, honestly. Also, I did see someone earlier reference if I saw the interview that Patrick Mahomes recently did. Patrick Mahomes is the quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs and also Travis Kelsey's BFF. And he spoke so highly of Taylor, you guys, so that she is one of, that she is the most down to earth person he's met at that caliber of celebrity and how she's always working super hard and that she genuinely has been trying to learn the game of football um and that she almost asks questions like a coach like she's like trying to learn the game and the business of football and we stand now the negative oh yay emotionally exhausted casey native here <gasps> Yes, if you are not subscribed and you're just finding me, maybe you are already subscribed. Uh, I'm also from Kansas City as well. So I always have a special place in my heart for Kansas City. Hello, I see people saying hi to Colin. Love that. Um, I, is Colin a new House of Hill member? If so, hi. Hello. Hello, hello. Um, okay, the negative news about Travis and why he's getting dragged. So, and I want to address this. Oh, Amanda's son. Hi. Oh my God. We love Stan, Amanda. Absolutely love, love, love Amanda. So Colin, you have the best mom ever. Okay. You have the best mom. Never take her for granted. Um, also Susan new here. Hi, Susan. Welcome to the House of Hills. So happy you're here. I hope you join us and hang with us um, and stick around. Kaylin said, hey, Madison, just checked my phone now and saw the notification for this live. Thanks for the apples. Never fall for recommendation. I enjoyed it and finished it quickly. Yay. It was so good. If you guys like a true crime scripted series, apples never fall far on Peacock. Highly recommend. Um, there's another series that I want to start watching. The one about like Little Deer or something on Netflix. Apparently it's about a stalker. It's apparently also really good. Um, but the negative news about Travis. Hi, Ruthann. I'm so happy that you made the live. Hi, hi, hi. I'm dying. Holy ish, never made a live. Woohoo. Yay, Ruthann. You're here, unfortunately, just in time for me to get into why Travis Kelsey is getting dragged. But again, I want to discuss this because if I didn't, people would call me biased and say that I don't address the negativity around Travis and I just stand Travis. And so I'm being well rounded and fair. Yes, this is um, like my living room of my apartment. I'm trying to switch it up for the vertical live so that way you guys don't see the same background all the time. Um, but Travis Kelsey, you guys, is coming 
under fire for liking an Instagram post that contained photos of Donald Trump. The post was from a former ESPN reporter, okay, who was at a political event. Travis follows the ESPN reporter on Instagram, and this woman just posted photos of her at this event, and Donald Trump was in some of the photos. <laughs> Kelsey said, not what I thought you were going to say. Kelsey, when I tell you, not the headline I thought I was going to be discussing about Travis today either, um, but they also discussed it on The View, so I was like, we got to talk about it. So obviously people are losing their minds because Travis liked this photo. And here's what I will say about it. I do not think this was Travis Kelsey endorsing Donald Trump in the slightest. Okay. Again, we've made several jokes about Travis's funniness. Okay. And sometimes how he's not the brightest bulb in the tanning bed. And I think he follows this ESPN reporter. He saw this ESPN reporter posted on her Instagram and he liked the post. I think anyone trying to make anything more of that is reaching and your arms probably going to pop out of the socket. It is not that deep. Also, I saw someone say, again, Everyone's entitled to an opinion, and that's true. Everyone is entitled to an opinion, even if you don't agree with the opinion. Everyone's still entitled to have one. And I know some people say opinions are like buttholes. Everybody has one, which isn't always the best thing, but it is what it is. You know, um, he double tapped this photo. Whoopi Goldberg, like, didn't want any part of the conversation. She was bored of it. She doesn't like Travis Kelsey because she's a hater. Um... And that's the T. He's, he's getting dragged. Angela said this is why I say it out politics. He's getting dragged for liking this photo. T. Russell said he's friends with Sage. She's a great woman. Exactly. Jen said, I mindlessly like people I follow those posts all the time. Jen, the way I do the same. Because obviously a lot of my friends also work in the entertainment industry. And the way I support their posts is like, 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 you know, engage, 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 engage. And I truly think he follows this woman. He saw she posted and he double tapped. Like, again, anyone trying to make anything more of it, I think is reaching. Eileen said, I honestly didn't think he would endorse Trump dating Taylor. And Eileen agreed. I, I really don't think it was an endorsement in any way, shape, or form. I think it was literally just him liking this photo. Um... And someone said, so stupid with Travis having openly condemned Trump before. Thank you. Uh, he is likely just liking a post of a friend, not showing, a, not showing love for Trump. Exactly. I'm like, we're talking about an athlete who knelt during the national anthem in solidarity. We're talking about an athlete who actively promoted people getting a COVID vaccine. We're talking about an athlete who has spoken up for things that he believes in. I just think people trying to make something out of nothing you know what I mean? And Leslie said, I can't stand the view. And honestly, Leslie, same, same. You know what we could use to replace the view? The House of Hill talk show. You know what I mean? No shade to all of the women on there. But to me, I just think like ever since, you know what's bothered me about the view? Ever since the writer's strike, and I will never forget this, you guys. I will never forget this. During the writer's strike, Whoopi Goldberg made a comment. They were like talking about Vanderpump Rules and Scandaball. And Whoopi Goldberg made a comment. And she's like, we're talking about this because we don't have writers. So we need to pay our writers so that way they can come back and we can talk about actual topics. And the way my mind was blown because I was like, why are people writing your opinions if you're on The View? Shouldn't you be writing your own opinions, coming up with your own topics? Like, that was very eye-opening to me. And so ever since then, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I think it's time, time for something new. Uh, Noelia said, people are bored. I agree. Kia said, I know Travis is having a laugh at all of this commentary. You know Travis is giggling. Like, Travis is literally like, this is crazy that people are upset with me for liking a photo, but this is what happens when you're dating Taylor Swift. Uh, Charlotte said, unpopular opinion, 
no unpopular opinions. No unpopular opinions. It's just a differing opinion, and that's totally okay. Not a huge Travis fan, not a hater, just not sure he's right for Taylor. Nice enough guy, but not sure he's on the same intellectual level as Taylor, as long as she's happy, though. Absolutely okay to have that opinion. I also don't necessarily think they're, like, intellectually on the same level, but I think that's why she digs him, in my opinion. Um, cause I think she's dated people who are super cerebral, like Jake Gyllenhaal. And this is my complete speculation, by the way, just based on the songs about Jake Gyllenhaal, he comes off as someone who's a little pompous and like very intellectually inclined. And I think that's cool. But sometimes I think when someone's like giving you kind of that like douchey vibe, that like too cerebral vibe. It doesn't work. I feel like you have to have balance in a relationship. Just my own personal opinion. Uh, Jen said, would you rather have a daytime talk show or a late night talk show, Madison? Honestly, Jen, I feel like my personality is daytime. I, I just feel like I'm not like funny enough for nighttime. And also, I just feel like the personality, if people turned me on at 11 o'clock at night, they'd be like, you're an annoying energizer bunny. Please, I want to watch you during the day. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like that would be would be me. Like, people would just be like, we can't watch this girl at night. You know what I mean? We got to watch her during the day. Uh, Sacred Space said, Jake Gyllenhaal and Joe Allen were the nose in the air ones. That's how I feel. I don't know why I just get that vibe that they... Like, I get the vibe that if she had a thought or, like, came up with a theory and they thought it was ridiculous, they'd be like... <laughs> You really think that? Really? Based on blah, 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 blah. And like, I don't love that. You know what I mean? Don't talk down to me. Don't talk down to me. If you disagree, that's fine. But don't talk down to me. And I feel like too, one thing that I will give Travis props for is he openly has talked about how Taylor has like opened his eyes up to so many things and like educated him on music taste and like all of these things. So I feel like, he is open to learning from her and he knows that she's like, he's not pretending that she's not smarter than him. You know what I mean? And again, that is no shade. I love Travis Kelsey. I loved this man before he started dating Taylor Swift. And I think he's endearing, authentic and amazing and so incredible at what he does. So I don't want anyone to feel like I'm insulting his intelligence because I'm not. If I had to go out and memorize 5,000 plays for a football team, I could not do it. I just think him and Taylor are smart in different ways. And I think it works. I think it works the way it is. It is working. You know what I mean? Um, Cass said, Jax is up. He's whining a hi to you in my ear. Hi, Jax. Hi. I don't want to be too loud, you know? Nothing worse than when you wake up from a nap and someone's screaming in your face. Um, let's see. Just a rhythm said, I feel like Taylor, after a breakup with Joe, she wanted a more chill and go with the flow type of person. Absolutely. 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 Um, and then Amanda said, I know this is so random and out of nowhere, but I'm living for this nice weather and seeing my son enjoy himself playing outside without catching a cold. Honestly, Amanda, we got to give thanks. You know what I mean? We got to give praise for the beautiful weather. We're having beautiful weather too. And I feel like nothing wrong with it. JC said, Travis kind of gives some red flags. I think they're in the honeymoon stage, but once it fades, I think we might see some red flags, kind of like the NFL game. You know, him yelling at Andy Reid I know turned a lot of people off. And I feel there is no excuse for that behavior. That was not okay. That was disrespectful. Absolutely 1 million percent not okay. And he owned up to it. He said, I know it's not okay. That behavior was not okay. He owned up to it. Andy Reid reprimanded him for it. They moved on. And I feel like if Andy Reid can move on from it, we all need to move on from it, in my opinion. Um, and I think it was a very intense game. Again, no excuse. He shouldn't have done it. He was in the wrong. But I didn't see that and think red flag. I saw that and thought, Travis, grow up. Stop acting like that. That's what I thought. You know what I mean? I'm not letting it slide. Um, I'm not forgetting it. Well, I want to forget it but I won't, but because everyone will keep bringing it up. But I truly saw that and I did not think, oh my God, red flag. He's, he's going to pull a Ryan Anderson and freak out because Taylor threw out some expired cheese. I didn't see that and think that. I saw that and was like, you guys, this was during a Super Bowl when we were not doing well. 
stakes were high, emotions were high, and he let his emotions get the best of him. Again, not saying it's okay. JP Love, what happened is he yelled in the coach's face. He like yelled in the coach's face. If you Google Travis Kelsey, that's now one of the top photos. Um, he yelled in the coach's face and everyone is like, red flags, Taylor should be worried. He has a temper. Y'all, go watch that man at Coachella. That man does not have a bad temper. He is vibing 98% of the time. He was in a high pressure situation. One of the biggest moments of his career he let his emotions get the best of him. And that's, it is what it is. Again, not saying that it was the right thing to do. Obviously, it was not the right thing to do. Um, but again, he apologized, he owned up to it, and the coach also let it go. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Um, T. Russell said his competitive nature is what's made him Amazing, literally. Crimson said, I'm from Alabama and we are huge with football and football players are on another level. I don't know. Some people just don't get football. I it's I think, yeah, you know, it's just, if you are a big football fan and you're kind of like grew up in that culture, you know what I mean? You know, like I grew up being, I grew up around football my entire life. I was a cheerleader for a little league football team. I coached cheer. So although I wasn't playing, I was around it all the time. All of my guy friends played football, watched football in college. Like Amanda said, his coach even said they have a tell it all relationship. Exactly. So again, I don't think Travis is giving red flags for his behavior on the football field. I think the reason that he's getting dragged was him doing an oversight and liking a friend's Instagram post. And that's the tea on Travis. Um, Taylor Swift, want to fill you all in on this. Um, <laughs> Cass, I love you. Cass said no one was telling Giselle to run from Tom Brady when he would break iPads every game. Cass, that's the tea. You guys know I like Tom Brady a lot more now um, than I did when he was playing football, but that's the tea, Cass. Um, Bobby said Trav is very protective of Tay and is her bodyguard. I love it. Literally same, 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 same. Um, okay, Taylor Swift, update on her, and then we will wrap things up. You guys have almost been live for an hour. What? Um, so Courtney Love is out here shading Taylor Swift in a new interview with the Evening Standard. And the reason why I, hi Jessica, totally okay, totally okay. Um, you guys, the reason why I'm so upset about Courtney Love is because y'all know when it comes to the Me Too movement, I have praised Courtney Love and I have said that everyone should have listened to Courtney Love years ago because she tried to tell people about Harvey Weinstein years ago and everyone laughed at her. No one took her seriously. And so I have been up here for years being like, we should have listened to Courtney Love. Oh my gosh, Courtney Love, Courtney Love, Courtney Love, Courtney Love. I always praise this woman. And now she's out here in a new interview kind of being like the opposite of women empowerment, you guys. Jane said, Courtney Love shading Taylor. Wow, literally. Emotionally exhausted said, OMG, Courtney, what the frick? T. Um, so Courtney Love, during this interview with the Evening Standard, Talking about Taylor, she said, quote, she might be a safe space for girls and she's probably the Madonna of now, but she's not an interesting artist. Yipes. Who's going to tell her? Who's going to tell her? You know what I mean? Is it going to be you? Is it going to be me? Um, Courtney Love, I like hate to break it to you, but... Taylor's pretty interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. Also, like, one of the highest grossing artists ever. The songwriter of our generation. Um, her tour made a billion dollars. So I would say people find her pretty interesting. You know what I mean? Going out on a limb here. But I would say she goes, she's interesting. Um, T. Russell said she's only listened to the singles. And T. Russell, I will say, whenever people... Um, whenever people hate on Taylor Swift, I feel like they always do so based on the hits and the 
singles that she released. You know what I mean? And if people would just take the time to listen to other songs of Taylor Swift, they would see the genius behind it. Because I even agree. Like, sometimes everything she releases as a single isn't my favorite. But the fact that you're going to sit up there, Diglo, she's a billionaire per Forbes T. The fact that you're going to sit up there to the evening standard and say Taylor Swift is not an interesting artist, touch grass. Um, to be fair, though, she also didn't say the nicest things about Lana Del Rey or Beyonce. So it's not like Taylor Swift was the only one that she dragged. Um, she said that Lana Del Rey, she used to like Lana Del Rey, but she doesn't like Lana Del Rey anymore. And she thinks that Lana Del Rey needs to take seven years off. Interesting. And then she also praised Beyonce for breaking into the country space and breaking barriers. But she said she doesn't like Cowboy Carter. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Katya said, Barbara Walters literally called her the music industry, so take several seats, lady. Literally, T. Uh, Jordina said, why seven? Random. Exactly. Uh, Kelsey said, why do these comments usually come from slubs we haven't heard of for some time? Kelsey, the T. Yesenia said, I'm usually an after watcher because of work, but yay, I'm so happy that you made it to this vertical live. I love it. Uh, Kelda said the music might not be for her and that is okay, but why the hate? You can't deny the reach and impact. Sounds bitter, which isn't a good look. And that's how I think too. I just also feel like as a female artist, to be up there in an interview and then drag three huge female artists of the time, like just isn't a good look. I, you know what I mean? Whether actually they're big or not. I just feel like sitting up there and dragging them and also having no real reason to drag them other than being like, I don't think she's interesting. I'm over Lana Del Rey. She needs a seven year break. Oh, congrats to Beyonce for breaking barriers, but don't like the album. Like it's just, hi Raymond from Texas. It just feels like it's not the vibe. You know what I mean? Robert, I love Cowboy Carter too. Actually, when I started my walk today, I started with um, Levi Jeans and Two Most Wanted, the Post Malone song and um, the Miley Cyrus song, Faves. But yeah, um, Crimson said, I don't mean to sound rude here, but what is she even known for musically? I looked it up because I was like, I didn't even know Courtney Love was doing music still. Um, but she has a band. So that's why she was interviewed. So she has a band. Didn't know that. Um, I only remember her for her ex, Kurt. Yeah, she was with Kurt Cobain for sure. And Chris said if Kurt was still around, he would travel with Taylor. Um, agreed. Agreed. Emotionally Exhausted said, I'm a Swift fan. I also consider Holes Live Through This as one of the my all-time favorite albums. Courtney is so incredibly intelligent, but she speaks out of her a lot about things she knows nothing about. Okay, emotionally exhausted. I love that because you're like, look, I'm a Swifty. Also love Courtney Love, but girly pop, let's not. And that's kind of how I feel too. You know what I mean? I just feel like she is the was the lead singer in Hole. I think she has a new band is what she was promoting. That's what I understood. Um, and look, Courtney Love has been around for decades, okay? She is a household name in her own genre. Again, I'm just saying, I think it's like poor to hate on Taylor Swift for no reason. And Beyonce and Lana, Del and Lana Del Rey. You know what I mean? Just not a good look. Not a good look. Also, Kelsey, enjoy your daughter's music program. Of course, you're so welcome. Um, that's why I wanted to do this live, this vertical live, you guys, just to give you those like few little updates. Um on things that we discussed yesterday on yesterday's happy hour hang and also fill you in on this Taylor and Travis T. Also, um, before I wrap up and I'll post this. Yes, Brittany, we are almost done. But just go back and watch. Go back and watch. I did want to also tell you guys um, the fitness challenge that we've been discussing. Here's what I'm thinking. Let me know. And I also will... Uh, post this in the community tab. So if someone missed this live, they can still participate. But I'm thinking we do a 30 day health and wellness challenge. And parts of the challenge will be to move our bodies for at least 30 minutes a day. 
five out of seven days a week because I'm going to be realistic. Sometimes on Saturday and Sunday, it's not happening for me. So I don't think it should feel, anyone else should feel pressured. So move our body for at least 30 minutes a day, at least five out of seven days a week, okay? Healthy eating, take that to mean whatever you want. I personally need carbs. I am not someone who can function without carbs, so I will be eating some carbs during this health challenge. But I think for me, the focus is gonna be on eating out less and cooking more at home and cooking more whole foods, but I will still have carbs because that's how I am. Um, also, drinking 72 ounces of water, which is essentially two big Stanleys because I'm bad at drinking water. I don't know if you guys are, but more water and more hydration is not gonna hurt us. It's gonna make us feel better and our skin is gonna be glowing. And then the other thing I thought we could do is we will like, however you wanna track your workouts. I use the Peloton app, but there's also a bunch of free apps that you can use. I thought every week in the community tab, I'll like post something like post your progress or let me know how your week was. And you guys can post that you worked, that you moved your body for 30 minutes, five out of the seven days, and then post something like, positive that happened during the week something you notice how you're feeling something good that happened a music program like whatever you want to do um so we'll do the 30-day challenge moving our bodies for at least 30 minutes eating healthier whatever that means to you drinking at least 72 ounces of water being accountable and posting our workouts for one another and then the other thing that I'm going to do is only drinking alcohol two days a week. Because you all know I'm trying to cut down on that. So only drinking alcohol two of the days. Because I feel like I'm someone who's like, oh, I'll have a glass of wine here. And I'm going out to dinner here and I'll have a glass of wine. So I am only going to allow myself to have alcohol alcoholic beverages two out of seven days. So that's what I'm doing. So... Um, Jessica said I don't drink alcohol. Perfect. Again, this is, that's a me thing. Um, you guys know I've been telling you like not drinking during the week and <laughs> no, Cass, literally same. I could never do a 30 day. That sounds bad, but I also love my wine. So I could never do a no drinking, um, but just drinking less, you know what I mean? And see if I feel better. Um, okay. Crimson said I can do that with soda. Epic Turtle said I'm making jello shots. Epic Turtle, what kind of jello shots are you making? Can I offer you a jello shot recipe? Obviously, you don't have to make this right now because you're like in, in the thick of it. But for the next time you make jello shots, I have a recipe for you. Caribou Lou jello shots. Pineapple jello. 151. Um, and just other re regular rum. But if it's just like a dash of 151 because that's a different kind of rum, and then a dash of Bacardi with pineapple jello. Oh, you, your jello shots will be a fan favorite. Fan favorite, okay? Absolute fan favorite. Pineapple jello, little 151, little Bacardi. Chef's kiss of jello shots. Um, definitely try it. Malibu. Malibu. Um, from the Tech Nine song. Mm -hmm. uh, pineapple jello. It's hard to find. You have to order it on Amazon, but it's worth it. So yes. So for the, um, alcohol situation of the fitness challenge, if it's easier for you to do soda, let's, let's implement that. It can be alcohol or soda, like whatever your vice is. So working out or moving your body for 30 minutes, at least five out of seven days of the week, drinking 72 ounces of water a day, Eating healthy, whatever that means for you, because I'm not a nutritionist and I am not a food expert. Like I said, I need carbs, so I'll be, carbs will still be a thing for me, but better carbs, whole carbs, not as many processed carbs. And then um, only drinking alcohol two days a week, trying to cut it out the rest of the days. And yeah, I think that, that sounds good, right? And then we will post our progress once a week. And what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is, yeah, 30 days. We'll do it for 30 days. And what I'm gonna do, let me guys know if you want me to do this or no. Um, I was gonna do like a daily video, like a daily YouTube short of keeping myself accountable. So I'll do like day one. And I'll show you guys my workout. I'll show you my water intake. I'll show you what I ate that day. Whether or not it was a day where I was having a beverage, you know, or not. Um, 
and I'll do that and just kind of do day one, day two, day three, all the way until day 30. And then, like I said, we'll do check-ins once a week on the community tab and you can like post your workouts that you did and post something positive that happened throughout the week. So if that sounds good, let me know. I'm going to post this all in the community tab. Um, pineapple on pizza, I say yes if it's with pepperoni and jalapeno. Just saying. That's my fave. Um, is I, I, you want to know my Pizza Hut order? Okay, now we're getting into it. Um, yes, Crystal, I will do more memory lane, se more memory lane segments. Yes, I need to bring those back. Thank you for reminding me. Um, my like favorite Pizza Hut order, my friend Christian turned me on to this, who was in the chat earlier, a stuffed crust pizza with cheese, obviously, pepperoni, jalapeno, and pineapple. Before we start our fitness challenge, actually, you can eat Pizza Hut on the fitness challenge. Again, everything in moderation, everything in balance. I think if you try to completely cut everything out, you're going to fail. So I believe in balance. Um, but if you're looking for a Pizza Hut pizza that slaps, stuffed crust, pepperoni, jalapeno, and pineapple. You heard it here, which I stole that from my friend Christian. But it is so good. Um, yes, Epic Turtle, I love spice. I live for spice. Um, Maria, yes, I'm still going to do tomorrow's normal happy hour hang. This is just a fun little addition to the week. Um, I decided to do this instead of doing a pop-off for today. But yes, still we'll do a happy hour hang um, tomorrow. So everything will be the same. I will see you all at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. Um, Noelia, I, she said, I don't believe in diets, but in portion control, tea. T, T, T. Just, Just Rhythm said, Madison, will repeat this till you see it. Can we please get a live Taylor Swift album listening party? I think that would be so fun. Yes. We talked about this briefly on Monday's Happy Hour Hang. I will do that. And I know I said that for, what would I, something happened. Oh, for, was it Cowboy Carter that someone wanted to do that? And I wasn't able to because something came up. But I have nothing planned this week except for listening to the Taylor Swift album. So, 1 million percent, we can do a Taylor Swift listening party for sure. Um, there's a chance I might be home, so my sister might be in the video. So as long as everyone's cool with that, then absolutely. And it'll probably be a vertical live just because that's easier, I feel like, to people, easier for people to watch on their phones. Um, so definitely can absolutely do that for sure. Also, if you're new here, please make sure you subscribe. We are always looking to grow the House of Hill. So if you're new here and you're just now seeing my face and you want to hang out with me more and want to hang out with the House of Hill more, please subscribe so we can grow our fam. Um, also, you guys, if you're here and you haven't given this video a thumbs up yet, please, please, please go ahead and do so. Georgina, that makes my heart so happy. Georgina said, of course, we stand Shay. That's why I love y'all. Y'all are the real ones. Um, definitely give this video a thumbs up if you haven't done so. Please subscribe. If you're not subscribed, make sure your notification bell is on. So that way, whenever YouTube notifications do work, you get your notification. But y'all know always the best way to keep up to date on lives and what's going on. Check the community tab. Um, I will always post when I'm going live on there. Um, several hours in advance. So if you're like, is Madison doing a vertical live today? What's going on? I always post it there. Um, and then the best way to make sure you're on time for lives is to just set an alarm, which I know sounds crazy, but it's the easiest way. And then also please make sure you're following me over on Instagram and TikTok as well at I am Madison Hill with two D's. And on that note, Eileen, by Madison and House of Hill. Um, I will see y'all tomorrow. Also, tune in if you're here and you're just now tuning into this live and you're like, wait, I'm coming in at the end. Who are you? What's going on? Tune in tomorrow um, for our live happy hour hang at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. I will see y'all then for more celeb tea. Lady from VT, so much fun for my first live, usually an after watcher. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy you were able to make it to a live. I love hearing that. I will see you all tomorrow at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. Have an incredible rest of your day, you guys, and ah, love ya.